Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over how to get chart history using the TD Ameritrade streamer. So this will allow us to get up-to-date candles or chart history for any of the futures that are available on the TD Ameritrade platform. And all we need to pass in is a JSON block that specifies the service. So here we are requesting chart history for the futures. We need to pass in a request ID, which this line takes care of just randomizing a number between 100 and 1000. Our account and source are passed in from our user principal response. And for the parameters, we need to pass in a symbol, the frequency, and period. So I have wrapped this in a function so that you can request any symbol, frequency, or period. And this will automatically return the JSON block. So for the symbol, just make sure you're following the same convention using a forward slash and the futures contract. And I believe you can be more specific. So say you want the September contract, you would just use ES. U22 and for the frequency M is for minute H is for hour D is for day W is for week N is for month so here's some examples so if you want one minute you would use M1 if you want hourly data you would just use H1 and so on for the period which would be the span so say you want minute data over four weeks you would pass in M1 and W4 but just as an FYI I tried using M1 over the span of a year and I think it returned about a month and a half worth of minute data for the futures contract. But this is the function I'll be using to request up to date chart history. And all these functions are just updated in my function script, which contain the JSON blocks on how to log in log out and stream the most actives. So I'm just going to be adding functions and JSON blocks onto the script so that we have everything together and the user could pick any of the streamers they want to use in a separate script. So apart from this, I'll also be showing you how to retrieve chart history for multiple futures contracts which if we scroll down we can see another function called latest futures chart so the main purpose of this function is to retrieve the latest futures data that we get from the streamer so whenever I get a message from this streamer I'll go ahead and send that data into the environment called API data and in this function I'll go ahead and extract the latest data so I start off by listing the environment names and in order to get the latest inside that response or that message should have a snapshot list. So in this line, I'm just trying to search which of these latest messages contain this snapshot list. And I'm going to go ahead and return that name. I'm going to subset the latest. I'm going to go ahead and extract that list and turn it into a data frame. I'm going to retrieve the symbol name by using the following line. And sometimes the latest bar has all zeros. So here in this line, if the sum of the last bar is equal to zero, then I'm just going to go ahead and drop that row. I'm going to format the timestamp here so if the user sets as XTS to true it'll convert this data into an XTS object otherwise it's just gonna return a data frame so we're gonna go ahead and drop the timestamp I'm gonna combine my timestamp with the chart data format the column names and go ahead and add the symbol as a column so this will be our function to get the latest data I also provided a futures list of all the available contracts currently on TD Ameritrade so I'm able to use the streamer to get data from any of these contracts so if you want to use the streamer to get bulk data for all the futures contracts, we're going to be using the following function called extract futures. So instead of saving the data into a new environment, I'm actually going to save these as RDS files in a folder in my desktop. So we're going to read that file in. We test whether or not that snapshot list exists within that file that we read. Otherwise, it will go ahead and remove that file and return chart data as null. And that's for messages that don't contain any data. Otherwise, it'll go ahead and apply a similar convention to the function above where we are buying the futures data. We extract the symbol name. And again, we're going to go ahead and drop the last row. If the sum equals to zero, I'm going to format my timestamp. And if the user wants this as an XTS object, we're going to go ahead and use XTS, combine columns two through six and order by the timestamp. Otherwise, we're just going to go ahead and drop the very first column, which contains the timestamp. I'm going to merge with the formatted timestamp. I'm going to format the column names. I'm going to add the symbol as a column and this formatting is good if you're trying to combine all the futures contracts together which will allow you to save this in a database so whether or not the user wants this as an xts object or not it will go ahead and return the chart data so let's go over an example i'm going to go ahead and save this so if we go into the script called single chart stream this script will be good if you're just trying to retrieve a single futures contract otherwise if you're trying to download multiple chart history for the futures contracts you would use this following script and i'll go over an example for both so let's start off by using this single chart stream we're going to read in all of our functions we're going to establish a connection we're going to get the current state of the web socket 
And on every message, I just want to print out the message out in the console. When I close the connection, I want to print out that we've closed. And in order to log in, I'm going to send my JSON block called login. And I went over the JSON block on how to log in in my previous video. So if you want to get that JSON block called login, you can find that in the previous video. I'm going to set up a new environment called API data and change my on message block. So this function will print out the message out in the console. And for every message we get from the streamer, I'm going to go ahead and assign that into to API data. I'm going to use my get latest futures chart function to retrieve the latest bars and I set that as XTS equal to true and I'm going to use chart series so that on every message I print out a plot for the candles. Now in order to set up the JSON block I'm going to use build chart history so for the symbol I'll be using the ES the frequency is a minute and the period will be day so I'll be getting minute data for the current day for the S&P futures. So after we build that JSON block, I'm just going to pass it in and send it to my streamer. And if I want to go ahead and stop the streamer, I'm just going to send my logout JSON block and that should log us out from the streamer. But all of these JSON blocks and functions will be available in that function script. So we're going to go ahead and source those functions. I'm going to set up my WebSocket and get the ready state. I'm going to run the following function and on close. I'm going to send my JSON block to log in. I'm going to set up that new environment, run that on message again, build the chart history and send that JSON block. So we should see a chart at every bar. Here we're going to maximize this. So this is just if you're trying to get a single futures contract, this script will just plot the current futures contract. But if you have other applications, you would just have to change this part of the function. So instead of just plotting it, maybe you want to save it into a folder, you would just change these two lines. But other than that, we're just going to go ahead and send the logout to logout. Now let's take a look at the next script, which is downloading bulk data for the futures contracts. So essentially the same thing here where we establish a WebSocket connection, we log in, and for every message, I'm going to save all the data into a desktop folder called futures dump. So if you're trying to download multiple futures contracts at a time, sometimes not all of the futures contracts will be returned. So later in the script, we check if we got all of the futures contracts we passed in. Otherwise, we save the futures contracts that we didn't get into this variable called missed. So in this line, I'm just checking whether or not the missed variable exists in our global environment. And if it does, I'm just going to retrieve the futures contracts we missed. Otherwise, Otherwise, I'm just going to return all the futures contracts which are found in this function script. So it'll return all of these minus the ones that we did get. So within this script, I'm going to go ahead and build the JSON blocks and you could choose whatever parameter you want for frequency and span or period. So it'll return quarterly data for 30 years and I'm going to go ahead and save that as a list. Now, once we have all those JSON blocks, I'm going to send all my JSON blocks in this for loop. And once I have everything saved, I'm just going to go ahead and log out. So let's go run through an example. All right. So we're going to source all of our functions, assign our WebSocket, get the ready state. And if it's one, I'm just going to go ahead and log in, assign our on message, build all the JSON blocks, and I'm going to send all of those in a for loop. So I'm going to check my futures dump folder. And once this is done running, you will see this populate. All right. So it's going to go ahead and dump all the files all at once. And after you see all these files, you can go ahead and log out. So now I'm going to be checking all the files we downloaded. I'm going to list all the files in that folder. I'm going to use extract futures. So remember this function will either read in and format the data. Otherwise, if it doesn't contain any futures data, it will go ahead and delete those files. I'm going to rbind list all the data we received. I'm going to extract all the unique futures contracts we received in that data frame. And I'm going to compare it to my TD futures to get the ones that we missed or we did not get any futures data for. So I'm going to go ahead and run this block. So it did miss a few of the futures contracts. And in order to get a more complete list, you would have to rerun this section. But if we check our futures table with all the data, we do see that these are separated by three months or quarterlies. So we have our timestamp or date the open, high, low, close volume, and also our symbol. So we should see all of our futures contracts here. Say we scroll down to the middle. So we're showing approximately 3,300 different entries. So let's go ahead and rerun this in order to get a more up-to-date list for the ones that we did miss. So I'm just going to go ahead and source the functions again, establish a connection, get the ready state, log in, assign our on message block. Now we're going to assign the tickers that we did miss into TD futures, build the JSON blocks and send that data. So now this time around, it shouldn't take that long to run since it's fewer tickers or symbols. Once it's done running, I'm going to go ahead and log out and I'm going to rerun this block. 
And if we check our futures table, now we see that we have more entries. So it was able to get the futures contracts that we did not get data for the last time. And I would just keep rerunning this until you get all the tickers you need. So I will probably be using this to get historical data for futures contracts so that I can analyze later. Well, guys, this concludes the video. I'll go ahead and add these scripts onto the Patreon and I'll leave a link down in the description area of the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.